Hey guys, how's it going? Hello to all my fellow quarantine guitar enthusiast friends. Welcome to yet another homeschooling show with little Tommy Bugavac, the session man from Cleveland. Man, uh, had a blast last night doing that little uh, live chat thing with dear Michael Palmisano. That was fun. I've never done anything like that before. Quite exciting it was. Uh, very cool. Uh, a little nerve-wracking, you know, going live on the TV, on the computer. But it was fun. And uh, and Tim Pierce was there, and Rick Beato was there, and Robert Baker was there. All these cool people. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. I had a good time. And uh, I also wanted to give a... A shout out to, uh, I know I'm, I'm not really supposed to say shout out anymore, but it's, it is the quickest, most ef effective way to, to say that. Um, Ron Ellis, man, the pickup guy, he sent some pickups for me. Humbucker set and a telly set. How exciting. And then the guy from Furious Slides, he sent a couple of these really nice titanium slides like Joe Walsh uses. Which brings me to my next point. Uh, thank you for that, you guys. And um, my old buddy, the doctor, offered up his house for a uh, a shipping address. If you guys want to send any T-shirts to get worn on the show, potentially. Um, I'll post all that in the, uh, you know, the, the description part of the uh, video today. If you guys want to send anything, that's awesome. Um, what else we got here? Uh, you know, and also too, I was going to say, uh, everyone was asking about homeschooling t-shirts and, and mugs and all that. And I was like, okay. So I got in touch with the guy who makes all the t-shirts for, um, the, the guitar house in Tulsa, my friend Drew, cause they got the real comfy t-shirts, man. Not those scratchy Gildans. They got nice next level t-shirts. So I'm going to have some of those made. If anybody wants one, they'll be very affordable. And some nice coffee mugs that say the homeschooling thing that my friend Eric designed the logo. And um, so Drew off also offered to ship them out of his store because he knows that I'll probably never have time to uh, fulfill orders once my regular session career starts again. Which, by the way, it's already starting to happen. I, I actually booked a couple gigs for for like May, first week of May. That'd be cool. Get back out there in the world. You know, I do miss certain aspects of being out in the world. <laughs> I was thinking about that today. Like, what do I really miss? You know, I miss Indian food, man. I love Indian food and I miss going to Indian restaurant. I miss getting a proper cup of coffee, seeing my dear friends and hugging them. But we'll be back there one day. We will. Um, and also thanks to uh, the guys at the, that pedal show for mentioning your old buddy, Uncle Larry. That's very cool, you guys. Thanks for doing that. Um, I had a couple of uh, funny things come into the viewer comment bin. Um, one guy said, uh, hey... Hey, Tom, I could write an essay on how inspired I am by your playing. For now, I'll leave it to my wife. She walks past and says, Who's that guy you've been listening to? Eat? Who's that guy you've been listening to every day? He seems really nice. He can come around for tea. <laughs> Cheers from Mark in Cornwall, UK. <laughs> that cracked me up. That's damn funny right there. Uh, tell your sweet wife I'd love to come around for tea sometime. If I'm ever in Cornwall, um, yeah, thank you for that. Thanks for, thanks for uh, watching the show, man. Let's see, what else we got? Uh, one guy said, love all your homeschooling vids. This, this one is so groovy. He was referring to that, that Bon Tom Roulet thing I did, the Louisiana groove. Would you entertain doing a video on layering guitar parts and how 
the component parts interact. Well, that's, 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 yeah, I can go into great detail about that. I still have this, that loop here. You guys want to check it out? That old Louisiana groove. Here it is, right here. It's actually. One chord. Four chord. Back to the one chord. Key of D. Let's see if my looper, that's actually two parts, right? I did that in two parts. I'll show you how. I talked about it a little bit last night on that on that thing, but um, let me see if I can erase the second part. Let's see if it'll let me do that. Ah, there you go. There's the first part. That is is just like uh like uh using that danny gatton sevenths thing right with uh with some some low bass notes Presley Hound Dog vibe. And then I added over the top of that, I went to like a uh, drop D. With a little more distortion to give it a little more uh, danger. And I started going like this. No delay or no reverb or anything. second part this is like a right come like like that vibe over the other thing so that's that and like when you're layering guitars you know like i feel like uh, the first thing i always keep in mind is contrast you know if you got if you got a bunch of guitars that you're planning on layering, it's best to have contrasting tones. Like if you're gonna have a a clean, dark, round sound for your for your bass thing, for your for your first track, then you wanna add, you know, just as a general rule, you wanna add some sort of brighter, thinner sound on top of that. Like Jimmy Page, Led Zeppelin was the was the master of understanding the, the importance of contrast in tones. I mean, you can get those solid up isolated tracks of the first couple Zeppelin records, great examples of like a big, fat, thick bass sound, and then this little tiny, thin, razory guitar that on their own don't really sound that amazing, but when you put them together, God, so good. So I'm always trying to keep that type of stuff in mind, like, uh, you know, you don't want to, things to get cloudy. You don't want too much low-end building up, or you don't want too much high-end building up. Just try to uh, get some different tones that, you know, that sort of marry together in a pleasing way. I, that's why I use so much EQ and things like that and pick up some guitar. So that's just a general rule. Um, contrast is, 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 is your friend, you know, when it comes to guitar tones, you know. I remember Dan Huff telling me one time, he said, dude, there's no such thing as a bad guitar sound. Like any horrible sound you could possibly dial up on any wacky piece of gear could be the perfect sound for the perfect part on a, on a certain track you know what i mean sometimes when i uh, when i get done orchestrating a bunch of guitars on a track that all sounds really cool together but if you start soloing up the individual track some of the sounds are like not pleasing they're kind of hard or harsh but when you put them in the mix with all the other stuff it's it's really good, you know. Um, that's just, you know, that just comes from years of, of trial and error and recording and stuff, you know. Um, you learn, like... I also think that... I always have this theory about guitar tones, too. Uh, 
if you have to turn the guitar tone up too loud in the mix to hear it, then it's not the right sound. Uh, I'm really adamant about that. If you, if you have to crank the fader on a guitar track to, to hear it, it's not the right sound. It should be able to, you should be able to barely crack that fader on and it sounds incredible on the track. Um, and that's just a matter of EQing, you know, that's why I'm such an EQ freak and, and a mid-range freak, you know. I'm, uh, like when Ron Ellis was making me these pickups, he said, what kind of pickups do you want? I said, the more mid-range, the better. Um, I'm just, because mid-range is your only friend when it, when it comes to guitar. Low end and high end are, are um, sort of up to taste, but but you need that mid range to really cut through because that's where you're you're sitting in most big band recordings, you know. Um, that's just general rule stuff there. Uh, what else we got in the uh, comment bin? Uh, a guy said, "Hey Tom, love the show. I have a question. Phrasing. Do you sing in your head or do you believe it's?" hours of playing just appearing in the moment hey you were looking good for a guy over 50 <laughs> thank you man well that's it's the coffee and the rolling rock man fountain of youth yeah man okay i'm gonna talk about one last thing and then i'm gonna shut up for today okay check this out i want you guys to try something tonight when you're playing guitar it's gonna sound silly but it's amazing okay Sit and play your guitar for a while. And just go off on an improv jam. And then do the same thing and close your eyes. Close your eyes and play. Don't open them at all. And just sit there and play and feel what it feels like to play guitar with your eyes closed as opposed to looking at anything. It's amazing how differently you play when you're only using your ears. Go with me on this. I know it's a little weird. I do it all the time in the studio. I I find myself looking at a chart sometimes. That's why I don't use charts anymore. I've gotten to this place at, at this age where I where I don't want to be looking at anything when I'm playing. I know when I'm playing here in these videos, I, I look at the camera. But on sessions when I'm really trying to create something, I try to get lost and I don't want to look at anything. I, 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 I just, I'd rather play the song a couple times and not looking at the chart and making mistakes until I learn it in my head. Then once that third take comes around and I know it and I don't have to look at anything, I can get lost. And remember I talked about getting free when you're playing? That's my number one goal, man. To be off somewhere in some other planet. Speaking of other planets, did you guys see that shit on the news where the Pentagon said the UFOs? They're here, my people. They're finally here. So yeah, yeah, close your eyes, get lost, uh, and and just go off on a on like a journey with your eyes closed, total darkness, and and feel what it feels like to just play only using your fingers and your ears, man. It's a totally different thing. Some of you guys have probably already tried it before, but if you haven't, check it out. It's amazing. I feel that's why. I've never seen a blind musician in my life who wasn't a total badass. Name one. Every one of them is incredible because they're only relying on their ears. And it's it's incredible how how much more soul it pulls out of you when you do that. Hey, Leo. Hi. How you doing? Good. But Mama said you I am going to play with you. Hold on. I'm almost done with this video. Think of a cool game you want to play. I'm almost done. That's Leo. He wants to play. And I do have to go. So, guys, uh, have fun. Um, practice. Play the guitar. Okay, guys, see you next time. Bye.